I already jacked up my truck and removed the wheel, so let's start by disconnecting the IWE vacuum hose. Just pull it off. Then we can begin working on that ABS line. Start with an eight millimeter wrench like this one. I tried to use the closed end, but it was too tight and won't fit. So use the open end to start. Then you can use the closed end to speed up the process if you have a set of ratcheting wrenches like these. These come in handy and I will link them down in the description below. Once that bolt is removed, you can grab a 10 millimeter socket and get to work on the bolt that holds this bracket in place. Remove the bolt and then you should be able to pull the bracket out. Now we can begin working on the brake caliper. So grab your 21 millimeter socket and loosen the two caliper bracket bolts. Don't remove the top bolt all the way as you don't want the caliper to fall after you remove the bottom bolt. This could put too much stress on the brake hose which can cause leaks. And you want to make sure it's the top bolt that is left in because if you leave the bottom bolt in, the caliper will still swing from top to bottom. So leave the top bolt in until you are ready to remove the whole unit. Once the bottom bolt is completely removed, you can get ready to remove the top bolt but there are two things you wanna do first. You wanna give the caliper a twist like this. This will help push the brake pads in just enough so it's easier to pull off the rotor, which will also help a ton when you're ready to put the caliper back on. The next thing you wanna do is get your caliper S hook or whatever you are using to secure the caliper ready. The caliper has some weight to it, so try to get as prepared as you can to make this easier on you. If you have an S hook, it should fit perfectly into the frame hole right here. My strap hooks did not fit, so I had to find another location. It took me a minute to figure out the best spot since I wanted to make sure the caliper would be far enough out of my way to not interfere with the job, but also high enough to prevent any stress on the brake hose. You also want to make sure you mount it on something that won't bend or break. I first placed the hook right here thinking it was far enough out of the way. However, as you can see, the caliper hung relatively low and I was worried about that brake hose. So I had to find another location. You can't see it right now because of the camera angle, but I hooked it around the upper control arm and it worked great. I'll show you that later. So grab your channel locks and start by removing this cap. You want to move around the cap while prying up and down or side to side. This will eventually free the cap and give you access to the axle nut. You can also use a flathead screwdriver and hit the end with the hammer as most people do. However, if you want to reuse your caps, this is a much better method as it won't damage the inside edge. And just like that, the cap pops right off. Now we can remove the axle nut. This is a 13 millimeter bolt and I recommend using a deep socket like this so you don't hit the wheel studs while turning your wrench. Also, the wheel tends to turn with the axle nut as you are trying to loosen it. So I recommend hitting your wrench with the palm of your hand a few times in the counterclockwise direction. Eventually it will loosen to the point where you can unscrew it by hand and remove it. Let's remove the nut for the outer tie rod. This is a 21 millimeter. Having an impact in this situation helps a ton. You will notice some resistance as the nut gets closer to coming off. Just keep turning. There we go. All right, here comes the fun part. You need to separate the tie rod from the hub. So grab your penetrating fluid and try to spray around the bushing like this and then spray upwards on the threads. Now let it set for a few minutes and then we can try to free it. All right, so I'm gonna try something that you should never do. I'm going to turn my truck on and turn the steering wheel from side to side in hopes of breaking the tie rod free. You can see right away how dangerous this is. Look how my truck rocked on the jack stand. I did not notice it while sitting in my truck, but after seeing the footage, I won't be doing that again. Of course, this part isn't in the camera's view, but you can see me hitting this part of the hub. This separated it perfectly. So I would advise you do that and do not move the steering wheel back and forth while it's on jack stands unless the whole front end is lifted and in the air. This allows the hub assembly to move freely side to side, which is gonna be beneficial if you need to remove the CV axle or the integrated wheel end, otherwise known as IWE. Now you just need to give it a couple of whacks and the tie rod is now completely free. Grab your eight millimeter socket and begin removing the three IWE bolts. There's one. And there's two. Here's the third and final bolt that holds the IWE to the hub. Go ahead and remove that. And now we can move on to that dreaded upper control arm nut. Grab your 21 millimeter deep socket and try to remove the nut all the way. This is possible to do as long as it doesn't separate, but mine just separated. So learning from the driver's side, I'm going to grab the torch and immediately start heating that nut. Eventually, you will feel less resistance when turning, and that means the nut is almost at the end. So at this point, I decided to grab my impact and finish it off. Just like that. 
Now you can pull the hub assembly away from the upper control arm and that will give you full access to the IWE and the axle. Then you can pull up on the IWE and the axle at the same time to get it away from the hub. The IWE can then pull off of the axle. Now let's remove that axle. This is a lot easier to remove than the driver's side because it doesn't have a C-clip on the end. This just pulls straight out after a few tugs. Just like that. You can lift the axle up and then pull straight out once it clears your end link. Now, there is an O-ring at the end that you will need to save. Sorry about the crappy camera work here, but you can kind of see me removing it. And there's the O-ring. Just wipe it off before you reinstall it. Before you install the new CV axle, you want to compare the old one to the new one. If you buy an OEM axle, yours should be identical. Mine is aftermarket, so you can see there are some differences. However, there are two things you want to look for. The first is you want to make sure they are the same length, which mine are. Then you want to make sure the teeth on the inside are the same, which again, mine are. If both of these match up, then you can begin the install. Oh, and the new axle will come with a new axle nut. However, I already bought new OEM nuts, so I'm just going to discard this one. You can start off by wiping the other end down with a paper towel to remove all the old grease and gunk. It doesn't have to be perfect, but try to get as much as you can off. Also, don't forget to clean that O-ring. Now we can apply new grease to a few parts. Let's start with this area here. You want to get some on your fingers and then rub it all around the grooves, just like this. Then get some on that O-ring before putting it back on. Once you have the O-ring covered, go ahead and slide the O-ring onto the shaft and push it all the way back. There's a groove in the shaft that I thought the O-ring sat in, but from what I read online, it needs to be pushed all the way back. If you know this is incorrect, please leave a comment below so I can get the correct information out to everybody. Real quick, this is another grease product you can use if you wanted to try something different. This is a sprayable kind of grease, and it may be easier for some of you with shorter arms that can't reach, or if you don't have gloves and want to keep the grease off of your fingers. Now you want to add grease to the opening of the axle. You don't need a whole lot because you already applied some to the other end, but you want to make sure you get grease into the grooves. Work the grease all the way around, and this is about how it should look. So after changing your gloves, go ahead and grab your axle and make sure you start above the end link and then slowly feed it between the end link and your strut, just like that. Now you can carefully try to get the grooves lined up so you can push the axle into place. Do you see the end right here? As long as it's moving with the rest of the axle, it's not seated properly. Okay, see how it stopped moving? Even when I give it a little tug with my hand directly on it, you can see it doesn't move. This means it's locked in and you can move on. Now we can grab our grease again and begin greasing the teeth at the end of our axle. Go ahead and apply it on the outside as well as the inside of the teeth. Once that's done, you can grab your IWE and place it with the two vacuum nipples facing toward the vehicle. Go ahead and push it on and make sure the teeth lock into the teeth of the axle. Just like that. Now grab your hardware for the IWE. I bought new bolts and a new axle nut from Ford. It wasn't too expensive and I'm glad I did since one of the old bolts is still stuck in the piece of the IWE that broke off. Now add some thread locker onto the bolt and then thread the bolt into place. Then do the same with the second bolt. Once my arm is out of the way, I'll show you where this bolt is. There we go, this is the top bolt. Now do the same with the third and final bolt. Perfect. Then you can grab your 8mm socket and begin tightening them down, but not too much. Just enough to make them snug before we can grab our torque wrench. Now I read online these need to be torqued down to 133 inch pounds, while my Chilton's manual reads 108 inch pounds. So I'm going with 108 inch pounds for now. If I need to go to 133, then I can always tighten them later. I do not want to risk going higher and being wrong as this could break the bolts. Oh, and make sure you are using inch pounds and not foot pounds. 108 foot pounds would definitely break them. Okay, so now we need to grab our torque wrench and torque these bolts down. All right, once those are done, we can start working on that upper control arm nut. You could have probably just done this instead of using a bungee, to be completely honest. This is gonna take some effort, but you wanna pull down on the top of the control arm. Using the pry bar would make this a lot easier. Then you can thread the nut on. As I stated earlier, make sure you are using brand new nuts. Do not reuse the old ones. Now, Ford calls for this to be torqued down to 85 foot-pounds. However, that would be quite difficult to do since I don't have a 21 millimeter open-ended wrench. So I'm just gonna use my impact. I'll show you what to do if you have a torque wrench in a minute. I'm going to use an impact to get the bolt started after finger tightening it. Then I'll grab my pry bar and pull down on the control arm. This allowed me to use the impact the rest of the way. Perfect.
Okay, so if you have a 21 millimeter open-ended wrench, you will need to wedge it up against the spring right here while it's on the nut. Then you should be able to use a torque wrench with the socket and tighten from the bottom. I think that would be the best way to tackle that, but if you have a different idea, let me know in the comments below and I'll add it to the description. If you used a bungee to hold the hub assembly in place, go ahead and remove it now. Let's move on to the axle nut. As you can see, there is red thread locker on these nuts already. Why is this important information, you may ask? Because for some reason, I added more thread locker to this one. I think the heat started to get to me. But you can see the red thread locker in the threads of the nut already. So this is completely unnecessary. Go ahead and screw the axle nut on by hand until it won't screw anymore. Then you can grab your 13 millimeter deep socket and begin tightening it down. You want to use a deep socket to prevent from hitting those wheel studs. Then you can grab your torque wrench and tighten it down to 30 foot pounds. Eventually the wheel bearing will start turning with the wrench, so grab a stud with one hand as you pull in your torque wrench with the other. Just like that. Now we can move on to the tie rod. Go ahead and line it up and push it into place. Okay, so I'm adding a thread locker to this nut, but that's because I did not know these needed to be replaced after taking off, which I had to do later on. So I just wanted to get this on and secure it until I got new ones from Ford. But I want to make this clear, you do not need to add thread locker to this nut or the upper control arm nut. You do, however, need to replace both. The torque spec for this nut is 85 foot-pounds. Now this part is completely unnecessary, but in order to prevent any kind of moisture from rusting out the parts inside, I decided to add some grease around the axle nut. I'm thinking this helps, however I could be completely wrong. So you do what you want with this. Now you can install your cap. Make sure it's as straight as possible before hitting it with a hammer or a mallet. That looks good. I'm going to wipe off the rest of the grease and then we can move on. All right, go ahead and screw a lug nut all the way on to keep the rotor from moving around while installing the caliper. Then grab your caliper and place it over the rotor. You may need to give the back of the caliper a few jabs, just make sure it's lined up perfectly. Now you can grab your bolt and hopefully you already put thread locker on it before mounting the caliper, like me. This looks easy because the caliper isn't moving around, but try to remember to add thread locker before grabbing the caliper so you can immediately start threading it in. These calipers have some weight to them. Go ahead and thread the bolt in as far as you can with your fingers and then you can torque them down to 184 foot pounds using your 21 millimeter socket. Perfect. Now you can grab your brake hose bracket and put it into the middle slot, just like that. Then you can grab the bigger of the two bolts remaining and add some thread locker to it. Finger tighten it. And then grab your 10 millimeter socket and snug it down. That should be good. I added some thread locker to this bolt as well, but it's probably not necessary. Go ahead and grab your eight millimeter socket and snug it down as well. Perfect. Now we can remove any bungees or straps we still have. Next, reattach your IWE vacuum line. This should just push right in, but make sure the larger hole and smaller hole line up with the male ends of the IWE. And then you can press the tab back into the bracket. My tab is broken as you can see, but it still holds. Now you need to apply a thin coat of anesthes to the face of the rotor, being careful not to get any on the surface that the brake pads come in contact with. All that's left is to get your wheel back on and torque down the lug nuts to 125 foot-pounds. That's all there is to it. If you found any part of this video helpful or entertaining, please give it a thumbs up. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit that button as well as the notification bell so you don't miss a video from our channel. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.